Mayor, we're live. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. For those of you who are joining us on YouTube uh, uh, to uh, view the City Council meeting tonight, welcome. We're glad you're here. As always, we welcome public comment during this time while we're meeting virtually. We are asking people to submit their public comments by either calling my uh, desk number at City Hall and leaving a message, or you can record a message using a smartphone or your computer and email it uh, to me at uh, Mayor Schumacher at Simpsonville.com. As always, uh, according to the ordinance, we limit those comments to three minutes in length, and you must have standing in the city either to be a resident or a business owner operating in the city of Simpsonville. So, uh, like I say, we welcome those comments. I know it's a little bit of a, a hoop to jump through, but uh, uh, we do in, enjoy having those. And in fact, tonight we do have one comment that was submitted in that way, which we'll hear once the meeting begins. Thank you. I'll ask those present here in the meeting. I do not have a uh, speaker arranged for an invocation. Is there anybody who would like to deliver the invocation tonight? Council Member Hutchings, I see your hand has raised. Let's uh, let's give it about a, a minute and a half or so before we do that, and then we'll be ready to start the meeting. That wasn't me. What's that? I said that wasn't me. You did well. You uh, your hand went up, so now you have to. Do, no, I'm kidding. If you don't want to do it, <laughs> I'll, I'll be glad to. <laughs> any other one? Any anybody else? Be careful. Scratch your nose. I'll make you do the invocation. Phyllis, you. <laughs> Welcome, Council Member Kelly. It is a longstanding tradition of Simpsonville City Council to have an invocation prior to the beginning of each meeting. Uh, we invite uh, members of the public to deliver an invocation uh, uh, through volunteering. And sometimes we have people who are attending virtually to deliver such an invocation. If you're interested in doing that, we welcome that. Uh, you can deliver an invocation that is appropriate your for your faith and, and consistent with your faith and suitable for the solemn nature of this meeting. As I don't have anybody who has volunteered to do that, I will deliver the invocation this evening. If you would, please bow your heads. Thank you, God, for bringing together the staff and council members tonight to do the important and good work of the city of Simpsonville. Guide us in making fair and equitable decisions in, in our duties as council members and uh, city staff. Please protect the city council, protect our city staff, protect our first responders and the citizens of Simpsonville. In your name we pray, amen. As 6.30 approaches, I will also remind those of you who are, are watching on YouTube that the agenda for tonight's meeting can be found at simpsonville.com slash meetings. Uh, also, the, the uh, council materials that are, that are handed out to council members is available there, too, uh, to help you follow along during the meeting. It is now 6.30. I call to order the October 27, 2020 meeting of Simpsonville City Council Committee of the Whole. City Clerk Long, would you please call the roll? Council Member Gooch? Here. Council Member Kelly? Here. Council Member Houlihan? Here. Council Member Ray? Here. Council Member Cummings? Here. Council Member Hutchings? Here. 
Mayor Schumacher. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Clerk Long. The next item of business on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Are there any revisions to the minutes for September 22nd, 2020 Committee of the Whole meeting? Hearing none, the minutes will stand approved as submitted. Next, we have citizen comments. As I mentioned, we do have one comment tonight, and this time I'll play that for you. Hello, my name is Barry Cantrell. I live at 502 Fox Sound Road in Simpsonville, and I fully support the new animal control measure uh, allowing chickens in neighborhoods. I think it's a wonderful, environmentally friendly option, and I think it should be passed. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Clerk Long, I will send the information to you on that comment for the minutes. Thank you. With his name and address, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Next on the agenda is our staff reports. We will start with the monthly financial report from our director of finance, Christine Farino. Ms. Farino. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, you should have received the September financial report. Uh, general fund revenues collected for September were just over $272,000, bringing the year-to-date total to 5% of the budgeted revenues. Expenses were 1.4 million, bringing the year-to-date total to 20% of the 20% of the, 20 of the budget. Uh, sewer fund revenues collected for September were just over $176,000, bringing the year-to-date total to 28% of the budget. Expenses uh, for the sewer fund were a little over $32,000 for a year-to-date total of 10% of the budgeted expenses. Uh, hospitality accommodation fund, uh, the revenues collected for September were a little over 200,000, bringing the year-to-date total to 17% of the budget. Um, expenses for September were a little over $15,000, bringing the year-to-date expenses to 5% of our budget. Um, the public works enterprise fund, uh, revenues collected for September were $3,791, um, and there was no expenses for September. I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Hearing no questions, then we will move on to the next report, which is from Community Relations Specialist, uh, Justin Campbell. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, so both murals on South Main Street are complete. The artist, Ms. Hennessy, completed the drive-in movie mur mural last week. Staff is very happy with the outcome of the murals project. I do want to thank the mural artist selection committee members for not only choosing an amazing artist, but also providing vital insight and feedback. Those members are Mayor Shoemaker, Councilman Hutchings, Councilwoman Roche, Heidi Green, and Cindy Tench from the Simpsonville Arts Foundation and property owner Hunter Howard Jr. The fall 2020 edition of the City of Simpsonville newsletter has been published. I plan to release the winter edition around Thanksgiving Day. Allison from the Chamber and I have met to discuss creative ways to promote small businesses in Simpsonville during the pandemic. American Express, which oversees Small Business Saturday that we've been doing for several years now, is planning to encourage online promotion of local shopping in lieu of hosting an actual event in person. So given that online promotion of small businesses is more feasible than holding Small Business Saturday, Forming an initiative that promotes local shopping from the Saturday after Thanksgiving Day, so that would be when we would normally have Small Business Day, all the way to Christmas is a great way to help small businesses. So just think of it as something like Simply Shop Local Season or something similar to that. Uh, this initiative can also be a stand-in for the holiday market. I've applied again for the city to be a quote, neighborhood champion. If you're not familiar with that term, we do that every year. Uh, American Express will send us small business Saturday, shop local uh, merchandise, um, things to promote small businesses in downtown. And we'll receive that in a couple of weeks. Uh, Allison and I will continue to work on that initiative and I'll keep you updated. If you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer them or find out the answer for you.
I see no members of council asking for attention, so thank you, Mr. Campbell. We'll thank move you, on to council. economic development from our planning and economic development director, Jason Knutson. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, as you can see from our site plan reviews, we are getting quite a few things through the system and reviewed and approved. Um, we really haven't seen any fall offs due to the pandemic. Uh, everything is kind of on hold, is, is going forward, so that's great news. Um, some of the key things that have been approved is the Bonds Core Health System facility. They're going to be starting to build on Grandview. Uh, right near Grandview and Harrison Bridge, as part of the, the mass grading that may have been seen out there, they're part of that. Uh, they're starting with a smaller facility, but over the future, we'll be growing that uh, to meet the needs the needs of the community. Um, we do have some apart two different apartment communities that are going to be starting to go online. Um, it's been shown that for years we've had a, a deficit in this type of the housing and uh, has been well received as we've been finishing up some of our past apartment complexes uh, and their occupancy rates are quite high. Um, they're, they're almost fully occupied after they're built. The boards of commissions this month, planning commission met and had a few items on their agenda. One was to approve a storage facility as part of the innovative development off Fairview Road. Another was uh, townhome development one of the ones that has been approved and going through. It's uh, going to be a for rent product. And then we also have uh, an item that's going to come before you later, which is a major change to the water leaf apartment complex. Uh, there was also, and we've gotten a lot of questions about this, the building uh, near CVS here on Main Street. They went through for an approval for a facade uh, alteration that required planning commission approval. So that's kind of in the delay on the progress for that. But we should soon see uh, the building taking better shape and looking a lot more pleasant to uh, for our community. It will be uh, quite a nice addition when done. Board of Zone Appeals had a couple of appeals of administrative decisions go before them. One was regarding parking lots, uh, parking lot lights. It was approved, but no direction was given to staff on what to do with that. And then another was about an accessory structure, and that uh, appeal was denied by the unanimous vote. And if there are any questions, I'll be more glad to answer those. I see no members of council asking for questions. So we'll move on to our next staff report, which is City Administrator Diana Gracely. Thank you, Mayor and members of council. Um, you have my complete report. I'll just highlight some of the progress that we're making with some projects. Um, just today, finally, we have received clearance from the Department of Commerce uh, on the Art Center project. We've completed the environmental review. We've completed all of the startup paperwork. And so now we are clear to bid that project. So we're very excited about that, finally getting that project underway. Um, the downtown master plan, as you know, is in a bit of a holding pattern due to um, COVID and, and our inability to have our council retreat when we had anticipated. However, I will say that we have done several smaller projects around downtown that have garnered a lot of public support. And I have received multiple um, comments via email or phone call or seeing people on the street where they are um, complementing all of our downtown improvements. So I think people are really starting to see progress in that area, and they're very excited. Um, the facade improvements in front of Mr. Howard's property, where Cycle House and Slice of Brooklyn and, and um, Thai Cuisine are, um, has been completed. It looks great. As, as Mr. Campbell mentioned, the two murals are completed. So I think it's really made a big difference in that particular block of South Maine. Um, also, with all of the progress happening at um, the warehouse at Vaughn's and also Burdette Central, people are really starting to see downtown take shape. And I wanted to mention to you all that um, I received a call from a reporter who's doing an article for Greenville Business Magazine um, about downtown revitalization a couple weeks ago, and we had a really nice discussion. And there will be a featured article about downtown revitalization that I hope will put Simpsonville front and center um, in their November edition of Greenville Business Magazine. Um, that should be available around 
um, mid-November at the latest. And they did send a photographer to meet with me last Friday. We walked all around downtown, and she took a lot of great photographs of some storefronts, um, warehouse at Bonds, a lot of the public improvements we've made, um, like the murals. <clears throat> so I think that will um, also highlight all of the progress we're making in Simpsonville. Uh, another really positive step forward, because we've been talking about this for a long time, is that the footings have been poured for the two interstate signs. I don't know if you've all noticed some ground disturbance out there, but those footings are in place. So the masonry work will start very soon, followed by the installation of our actual signage and then landscaping, which public works will complete shortly after the sign is installed. So finally making some progress there. We're very excited about it. Um, and along those same lines, we have made improvements to all of the brick monument signs as you come into town, um, two on Highway 14, one on Fairview, and the other one at East Georgia Road. Um, we replaced the old plastic signs that were supposed to look like a cast bronze, but they are actually plastic. A lot of that was falling off and chipping, so we replaced that with the new logo. Um, we took the... Um, I always want to say avocados there. Uh, they were actually, I think they were meant to be pineapples, but they were artichokes that were on the top of the, those signposts. And we replaced those with nice lanterns um, with some up lighting and the landscape is due to be replaced around those signs in the next couple of weeks. So a lot of improvements there. Um, and then finally, I'll just mention um, it's getting close to the holidays, and we are planning our second annual Christmas tree lighting. That will be held on, we'll make sure I give you the right date here for your calendar, um, December the 3rd. It's Thursday, December the 3rd at 6 p.m. here at City Hall. Um, we, we're going to try to be consistent with that every year, and we'll be the Thursday immediately following Thanksgiving, always at 6 p.m. So if you want to add that to your calendar, um, and Mr. Campbell and I are in the planning stages now for the agenda for that event. And I'll answer any questions you might have. Any questions or comments for Ms. Gracely? Council Member Rochette. Hi, I've gotten some questions about the little flags that are along the railroad tracks. Um, on the side where, like, the bed and breakfast and historic homes are. Right. Is someone doing work there along the railroad tracks? I'm not sure. Um, perhaps uh, Mr. West can answer that. I, I don't think there's anything the city's doing. It may just be a utility locate for some private work that's happening. Andy, okay. do you have yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was just some flags that we had put up, I guess, to put in the signs that say no motorized vehicles we usually flag an area so when they locate they know where to go um and they may come in and flag the utilities after that so um it, it's probably about time for us to pick them up because those signs have been put up so we'll take care of that okay and then one more question um there was discussion a number of months ago i want to say four months ago about getting uh public works to do a schedule that each neighborhood could have um, based on when they would be doing brush pickup and leaf pickup in particular. Um, like we have for the, you know, we, we have certain days we can expect the trash and recycling, but nobody seems to know when the brush truck will be around or when the leaf vacuum truck will be around. And so I, I don't know if everybody else gets it, but I get a lot of questions about when's that coming. And I have to call Public Works myself or give them the phone number. So I believe that, uh, uh, it was said that we would get a rotating schedule that citizens could have. Um, is there any progress on that, or has it been published yet? The biggest issue we had with the brush pickup, back when uh, everybody was kind of quarantined at home, um, of course, everybody was doing yard work. So lately, the brush seems to have kind of trickled down. We've stopped running a third truck. We're back to two trucks. Um, so really, to schedule it, it's kind of hard because if, say, in, in Hunter's Woods, the load's light, but let's say we're going to do Hunter's Woods in Westwood on Monday, and then they have a light load, which really skipped to another part of town, if those people are expecting it on Tuesday. Um, so the schedule for brush, um, it's just kind of 
seems to work. Holly knows where they are. Usually when they call in, the GPS tracks the truck. So it seems to have lightened up on the brush side. We just started leaf took up. Um, we're running, usually doing the whole city in about a day right now. Uh, of course, we know after Halloween, between Halloween and Thanksgiving, that's going to pick up. So we're going to have, instead of what was done in the past, of say two trucks on opposite ends work towards the middle, we're putting two trucks in the same area of town. So we can clean that up and um, do it all in one time. That way, if we know we're in, say, the south end of town, we're going to be in the south end of town. We're not going to be split up. Um, that's kind of the way it was done in the past. We're going to do it this way this year. Uh, we hauled our first load of leaves out today. So um, it's definitely picking up. So it's really not a set schedule because it all depends on how fast the leaves fall. And they either fall a little at a time or they fall all at once. I prefer for them to fall all at once so I can get it over with, but we'll see. Uh, I, agree, I agree with that. We we would prefer they all fall at once too, so I know what weekend I have to stay home and do yard work. <laughs> um, I, I, I really think, though, we need to get that notice out because what's happening is the truck goes by and it reminds people I need to get my leaves to the curb. Then they put them there and the truck doesn't come for weeks and weeks. And then now they're all wet, they're deteriorating, they're in the sewer uh, you know, basins for uh, water, rainwater, stormwater. Um, if we need to have, if we're not going to have a schedule, as we had agreed I think, on, then I'm I sorry, think I, 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 go we, ahead, at I'm sorry. Get, we at least need to get word to the residents, hey, the leaf truck, the leaf truck is coming this week. Um, I don't know if we could put it out there on Discover, the Discover page, um, maybe, um, Council members could get prior notice so that we could put that in our neighborhood pages, let people know that it's coming. Uh, but I would, I would really think that would be beneficial. I think you know, maybe the easiest way to do it is to do like a two-week look ahead where, you know, if we know, say, the week of the 26th of October, which we just passed. But if I just put out a schedule on the 18th and, and said, you know, we're the 26th of October is kind of when – we're going to be in your neighborhood and your side of town. That may be the best option rather than giving a specific day. But at least we can kind of give a little bit of a forecast of where we're going to be. And for the most part, Holly does a pretty good job at that at knowing where they're going to be by using the GPS on the trucks. And right now, like I said, we're doing that. They're done with the city by lunchtime, usually now. And that's going to change after the winds of the tropical storm blow this week, I'm sure. So, um, it's just kind of one of those things you kind of have to call audibles from time to time, but, um, that's a pretty good idea. We'll, uh, we'll try to give you all a heads up so you can kind of know what to tell the people you represent. So thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Council member Hutchings. Especially have we, uh, uh, posted a request for bids on the art center project at this point. So we just got the approval today to move forward with the bids. Um, we will be doing that as soon as the architect is able to incorporate. There are a couple things we have to include in the bid documents because it's a federal project. We have to include um, the Davis-Bacon wage decision, which basically holds the contractor to paying set minimum wages for different trades. Um, so they'll incorporate that into their specifications and get the bid documents ready to go. So I would say within a week or so, it'll be in Skibo and um, bidders will be aware that they can bid on that project. We'll have roughly a 30-day bid um, with a mandatory walkthrough at the center for interested bidders. Um, so I'm hoping um, we'll have a bid opening in about 45 days or so, and we'll know where we are budget-wise. Um, with because we are required to take competitive bids for this project because of the federal money involved. Also, a uh, question on the uh, Vaughn's uh, project. What's the status of occupancy there? Is, that, is all that space taken now? So I think he still has a few spaces available for lease, but yeah, by and large, I think he's pretty full. He was in the office today, um, and spoke with uh, Mr. Knutson about arranging uh, an inspection for a CO, which will likely be a provisional CO because they're not quite ready with everything yet. But if there are no life safety 
issues, I think he can get a provisional and, and start operating a couple of the locations inside there. They're very, very close. Thank you. Any other comments or questions for Administrator Gracely? I will just say that I am glad that leaves falling is not under the control of council because it, at my house, they would be over my head if they all fell at once. So next item, I think we move on to business. Uh, the first item of business there is ordinance number 2020-03. Oh, I'm sorry, before we move on to that, uh, were there any questions for the other department heads from the, their reports from any members of council? Okay, thank you. So. Item 6A, ordinance number 2020-03, comprehensive plan. Uh, uh, Mr. Knutson, if you would summarize for us, please. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit of a long one. Um, I do have a, a slide presentation if I can share my screen. Would you like for me to hand over control? Yes, that'd be good. Let me find you here in the list. <laughs> All yours. Okay. Give me a second here. It has clicked around on me. Okay. Is that is it nice and large for everybody on the screens? So our comprehensive plan, just go over, uh, I'll try to keep this as brief as possible, but this is quite a large document. Um, it is our future outlook for the next 10 to 20 years, and kind of our goals and our objectives of how we'd like to see the city grow. So uh, the shape of this document, a lot of it is actually subject to, to state law, and they do require us to have at least these nine elements shown for you. Uh, population, economic growth, land use, housing, cultural resources, public facilities, transportation, natural resources, and priority investment. And so these are broken into individual chapters within our document. So within each chapter, there's a brief introduction that kind of explains what the chapter is about, uh, existing conditions and issues that are specific to our area and to Simpsonville. Then we have objectives of what we want to do to be able to address some of those issues, um, or even just, it might not be issue related, it may just be want to be the course that we take in the future. And then an action summary, which is basically a table that lays out uh, the, the objectives and the specific strategies to be able to achieve those. Uh, it includes the action needed, responsibility, uh, time frames, and priority of when it should be done. First of those chapters has a couple has a lot of interesting information. I pulled out three different uh, charts here just to look at real quick. Uh, population, you can see that our growth, um, three out of four shown here, have kind of seen a real spike in the last year. Uh, we've been seeing a steady increase in population, as everyone knows, um, and we do forecast that to continue uh, into the near future. An interesting thing to show as well is, is our educational attainment. Um, we have grown in our bachelor's and higher degree educations to be the lead in our region. Uh, we were, in our last comp plan, tailing behind a couple, but uh, it's great to see that, that uh, our education levels are increasing for our city. And you can see that our high school graduates and higher is at a very nice percentage. It's above that of the county, above that of the state. In our medium income, uh, household incomes, we have grown significantly since 2010. Uh, these figures are based off of 2018. That's the, the existing data from the Census Bureau that we can use. And you can see that right now our median income is in the top of our area at 67,456. So that's a great place for us to be as a community. Uh, it shows we've had great growth and we have great potential too. So our objectives for the population are to ensure that we have accurate population figures, prepare to meet the needs of our increasing population, target age groups, to support the diversity of the population. For economic growth, these are the factors we want to look at. They cover things dealing with 
uh, keeping a healthy economy. Um, and so our objectives here are to diversify, diversify the economy, expand opportunity, ensure land use and development strategies are sufficient encourage continued high quality investment and economic viability, support and encourage redevelopment and reinvestment in our downtown area, support tourism, and then strengthen the planning communication with our infrastructure providers. The land use, this is a look at what we're doing with our land and what we want to see in the future, including areas that are around our perimeter that may annex within the next 10, 20 years. Um, so we want to make sure that our new development, especially in areas of of historic significance, follow those characteristics. We also want to promote and coordinate our, our planning with county and neighboring municipalities so we kind of have a cohesive growth. We want to prioritize infill locations and redevelopment opportunity to, instead of promoting sprawl and foster strong neighborhood quality, promote mixed use development, and administer efficient orderly land use development services. With our housing element, we're looking at what our existing stock is, what we're going to do in the future, rentals versus ownership, also the affordable housing. Well, it seems like there's only a couple objectives. There's quite a few strategies to follow those objectives. Uh, but the, the objectives as stated are to improve our housing choice and affordability, as well to promote quality neighborhoods. Cultural resources, so we're talking about historic buildings, uh, some of our commercial and residential, uh, archaeological, scenic resources that we may have. Our objectives here are really to increase awareness of the types, locations, and benefit of those resources, continue to maintain and have, enhance them, protect our historical resources through land use planning and our regulation, and then support community events and local art. Public facilities, um, these are anywhere from fire to police protection, the solid waste collection. We want to make sure that we're providing efficient public services, establishing community facilities as neighborhood centers, prioritizing improvements and expansions, and then coordinating again with outside facility and service providers. For our transportation element, uh, and this is obviously a big concern to most. As we continue to grow, we do need improvements to, to transportation and provide new alternatives like our trail system. And so our objectives here are to provide safe and efficient systems to meet adequate level of service requirements, to improve the sidewalk network and promote safe pedestrian travel, create trail systems that encourage pedestrian and bicycle usage, promote and encourage mass transit, and then enhance key gateways to, to Simpsonville. For our natural resources element, um, we want to promote sustainable development practices, things that are going to have uh, the least impact on our natural resources. We want to conserve the qualities of environmentally sensitive lands, and promote energy conservation and efficiency. Basically, we want to reduce our impacts to our environment to future generations. Priority investment. Um, this is where you know, council kind of sets a priority of where funds are going to go to, and we part of the a lot of the the element here is looking at and recognizing where those funds can come from. But our objectives are to identify the sources, uh, identify and plan for public infrastructure, public and facility improvements uh, to meet the, the changing population, and to establish a coordinated approach uh, to public infrastructure and facility planning. Um, so these are the, the elements and our main objectives that we're looking for, again, there are a number of strategies that go behind these, and they can be found within the document that was provided to you on how we're setting out to accomplish these things. Um, this list by no means is all inclusive. There's obviously projects that we'll come up with that are outside these bounds, uh, and that's perfectly fine. We, we can't plan for every condition or circumstance that may, may come to the city. I feel that uh, what's been laid out before you is a great, great uh, future for our city, and it's one that uh, we fully support. If you have any questions, I'd be more than glad to answer those at this time. Jason, if you would uh, give control back over to me so I can get the council members where I can see them. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, a motion is in order. Council Member Hutchings. You'll have to unmute, please. 
I had a question, actually. Um, will the final document reflect the 2020 census figures? No, uh, 2020 census figures we've collected this year, but it's expected we won't see those numbers for another. Councilmember Gooch, hold on a no, moment, Mr. We can now have a discussion with our motion. Thank you, Councilmember Gooch. That's uh, in good order. The motion is in order, please. Councilmember Gooch? May a shoemaker. Councilmember Gooch. Thank you, Mayor Council. I move we accept the uh, 2040 <coughs> plan as proposed. Second. Motion from Councilmember Gooch with a second from Councilmember Cummings uh, to approve the ordinance number 2020 03 comprehensive plan. Discussion. Councilmember Gooch, you had the motion. I will ask you if you have any questions first. No, I defer to Mr. Hutchings. All right, negative uh, on Councilmember Gooch. So, Councilmember Hutchings. I'll just restate my question. Will, will the uh, final product reflect the 2020 census figures? It, it will not. The um, We will use them in future planning opportunities, but by the time the census collects that data, processes it, analyzes it, we probably will not see that for about two years. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council Member Houlihan. According to the staff report, you weren't able to hold public meetings because of the pandemic. So you did a survey that was advertised on the city's webpage and on social media. What was the response to that like? Uh, not very good. Um, we, we tried multiple times to be able to advertise that, to really get it out into the public knowledge. Um, it, we really didn't get any response back from it. There was a series of them planned to go forward. So what we did use for the public comment, is we were lucky enough to be in a situation where we just finished public comment for our downtown master plan. The county collected a lot of public comment regarding uh, their comprehensive plan, which was finished at the beginning of this year. And so going through a lot of that data, what we received in other public meetings and hearings, um, a lot of it all kind of comes together to a few key things, uh, mainly transportation and infrastructure. Those are the main concerns of our community. And so we definitely looked at that very closely and included all the comments we've heard recently and over the years from any of our public meetings to kind of fill that gap um, that was caused by the pandemic. And this still has to go to the Planning Commission for review? Correct. It'll be going to the Planning Commission on November 4th for their review and to give a recommendation to Council before you see it the following week uh, for your business meeting. And they'll take public comment at the Planning Commission? Absolutely. It will be open for public comment and advertised as such. And will the comp plan be online or is it already online so that people could look at it before public comment? Absolutely. It's online. We have uh, its own link on our homepage that will take you straight to it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions from Council? So Mr. Knudsen, uh, uh, Council Member Hutchings asked about the census, and I was looking at the information that we were getting back from the Census Bureau, and, and I asked your, ask you the same question if you interpret it the way that I do, but but the participation is very, very high in Simpsonville. Am I getting that correctly? That I know the census is closed, but I, the information I got was is that we had very, very high participation in the census. Uh, that That's information that was not shared with me. Uh, nobody from the Bureau contacts us, uh, staff level, and really gives us any input on uh, the quality of information we gathered or even the percentage of participation. Okay, I had received a report back from the Census Bureau that, with a link that you could go to and look at. So uh, uh, so what I saw was, the way I interpreted it was, is that we had very good participation, which is a good thing uh, for great. future planning. So, yeah, just as a, as a note. comment that I'll make is that uh, as we move forward with the comprehensive plan, uh, 
if we don't have a mechanism in place, I would recommend that we come up with some mechanism uh, that's reported back to council for these objectives, uh, you know, some, some way of tracking how we're doing on these objectives against the comprehensive plan, because uh, things like this have a tendency to, you know, turn into a ring binder on the shelf. And I just, you know, I know that we remember a lot of what's in there, but uh, I think it's, you do better at achieving those objectives if you, if you report on them. Mr. Yeah. Holmes? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, I just, just wanted to remind you on that issue that the comprehensive plan has to be done every 10 years by state law. We're actually a little bit behind. We, we actually readopted the old one because we had to meet a time deadline, and staff has finally gotten this one to you. Um, but every time you have either a rezoning or a planning issue, one of the issues that's addressed with the planning commission and is addressed in staff report to council is what does the comprehensive plan call for? Because if you understand the basis of the comprehensive plan, it's to provide guidance for how future development will take place. So the question is, is this request consistent with a comprehensive plan or is it not? And if it's not, then staff has to justify a reason for departing from the comprehensive plan. And in some council meetings in the past, the biggest portion of the discussion on a rezoning application, annexation application has been, why are we not following the comprehensive plan or what does it provide? So there is a mechanism in place where you're going to hear about it every now and then. Thank you. Mr. Knudsen. One thing to add as well, the state also requires us to revisit this in five years and to be able to update and revise uh, any of our objectives and kind of do uh, uh, and how are we doing um, process, and that will come back for you at that time as well. Thank you. I appreciate your work on this. Are there any other comments or questions from council? Seeing nobody asking for attention, I'll call for a roll call vote. Clerk Long, would you call this roll call vote, please? Council Member Gooch? Yes. Council Member Kelly? Yes. Council Member Houlihan? Yes. Council Member Kay? Yes. Council Member Cummings? Yes. Council Member Hutchings? Yes. Mayor Schumacher? Yes. Motion carry. Thank you, Clerk Long. Next item is 6B, SP-2020-06, water leaf at Neely Ferry, major change. Uh, Planning and Economic Development Director Knudsen, if you'll summarize, please. Uh, if you can share the screen again. It appears you may have it. I, it says you're the presenter, so so uh, share your screen there. Let's see. Okay. Very good. Can I, okay, excellent. Um, so what we have for you is a major change to the water leaf apartment complex. Uh, this is one of those that was recently finished last couple of years uh, or year about now. Um, if I remember correctly, about 97% occupancy already. Uh, which is great. They've always planned on a phase two. As you can see on the screen here, phase two is shown in the back uh, western kind of portion of this. And it was originally going to be uh, just for two-story office space. But as the pandemic has kind of changed a lot of business practices for companies and individuals, a lot of work from home needs have become identified. So what they're looking to actually do is to go back and kind of reformat phase two to be able to include some flexible office space that's for uh, rent really targeted at those residents so that they can be able to have a work from home without having to be in their apartment. Uh, so it's very close proximity, but they also uh, like to include more apartment spaces above that. You've been provided with the updated statement of intent that they're proposing, uh, which has been 
the red text would be the new proposed text, really outlining what those office spaces would be for. If you have a few pictures here that were provided, uh, kind of indicating what they're looking to do. As you can see, they do have a bunch of office space at the bottom, bottom floors. These are some of the carriage houses that would be live work. Um, one of the corridors that would have all of the openings to the different uh, available spaces. And something to note as well, uh, transportation or, or traffic is one of the key things that we had in conversation when, when initially approving this plan uh, in the beginning. And so they took some feedback they got from some of the tours they were doing and had their traffic engineer go back and look at the numbers and see what the impact would be on this proposed change. And it actually comes out to present less traffic impact than if it remained as office space. Um, they're reducing from 25,000 square feet of business general commercial office space to 12,000. That combined with the units, um, we, we're seeing a reduction. Um, just to give you uh, the numbers. Current plan, as already approved, would have 65 trips. During you take that 65 down to 61 during the AM and the 87 down to 75 during the PM. So it's not uh, um, a, a huge margin, but it is a reduction of what's already currently been approved. Um, and so that, that's great to see. And uh, I'll leave it over on the uh, proposed here. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer those. Thank you, Mr. Knudsen. A motion is in order. Councilmember Roche? Mayor, I move that Council approve SP 2020 6 Waterleaf at Neely Ferry, ne Neely Ferry major change. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Roche with a second from Councilmember Hutchings to approve SP 2020 06 Waterleaf at Neely Ferry major change. Discussion? Councilmember Roche. <clears throat> um, Mr. Knudsen, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, this concept would fall within the proper zoning that would allow office space as well as residential. But are there stipulations as to what types of business can be done in these offices, such as, um, I'm assuming, things that don't generate traffic from customers or clients? Yes, so currently um, under their current proposed or the current state of intent, it allows uses in the business general, which uh, would include some higher intensity, but they have put in on the last page of their state of intent that they would be reducing that to business limit. So business limited is really tailored for office use. Um, they really kind of see it, and, and they're not really large um, spaces, so you're not going to have like a commercial shop where you have people coming in and doing shopping. It's more for those tenants to get out of their apartment, have a place where they can have meetings, where they can uh, do office work and some privacy, but they're not having to travel far distances or share a workspace with somebody. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One more, one more question. I noticed that the proposed change. Um, Highlighted in red that Greenville Water and Simpsonville's sewer system would accommodate phase one and phase two. Um, there was nothing said about phase, sorry, phase one for both of those. There was nothing said about phase two and the additional residence and office space. Is there any concern about our sewer system in that area? We're really getting grown. Yeah, there, there are any capacity issues. Um, Andy and myself have been meeting with them and discussing um, the sewer capacities and, ha and the flows for it. So there's a few things we're working through, but as far as will the lines support what they're, they're proposing, they will. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions from council? So, 
I went and saw the model unit with Council Member Hutchings on uh, yesterday morning, and uh, this very interesting concept. I, I am thinking that it's a it's a good idea. I do have some questions about uh, just making sure that we understand that uh, you already mentioned, Mr. Knutson, that this reduces the amount of office space by more than half and increases, if I have the number correct, the number of residential un units by 181. Is that is that correct? Mm, it says a maximum of 138 units. Um, that unit count, units. yeah, and that unit count comes out to about 11 units per acre, um, when traditionally we see about 14 units per acre for a lot of these apartment complexes. So we're still staying under what we're normally seeing. Right. So I'm curious how 138 additional apartment units only generates 60 additional. Uh, is, is that because the amount of traffic that would have been created by the larger business spaces goes down that much? It does. It does. Um, you know, traffic uh, studies are based off of kind of the highest use that could, could be accomplished. And so, uh, with it being a business general, a doctor's office could have gone in there, which can generate quite a few trips a day. And there, there could have been a really good likelihood of one being there because of the lack of those services to that area. Right. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. uh, to council member Roche's question, the, uh, Mr. Peterson is here with us uh, tonight, but he explained yesterday that, uh, the spaces, uh, would come with, uh, some appropriate use requirements that would be built into the lease when the, when the person left the space, uh, which would uh, be something that they would determine was appropriate. And the space that he showed us, which was the largest one that would be put in over there, uh, is, is a very adequate amount of office space, but mm -hmm. there's, there's not a kitchen in, in these spaces. There's not a, a, a bathtub or a shower. Uh, so you couldn't move in and, and make it a residence. Yeah. It just would be practical to do that. So it's going to be a small office, and and uh, by a small office, I mean much smaller than like Mr. Knudsen was mentioning, like a doctor's mm -hmm. office or that kind of thing. So uh, uh, my uh, my concern for for the developers is is that uh, this may be so popular that uh, they may not have enough of these little yeah. offices, which would be a good problem to have. But I do think that it definitely meets the innovative development uh, uh, idea, in my opinion. So, are there any other comments or questions from council? Council Member Hutchings? Uh, yes, Mayor. One, one other thing that we discussed, if you remember in our walkthrough, was uh, the possibility of uh, trying to include some area for walking uh, from the neighboring properties down to the food line area. Uh, making some provisions for that. And I believe that was something that the developer said that they would like to try to look into. Yeah, we, I've already been in discussions with Seth. They're more than willing to be look at that to see if the engineering is possible for it. Uh, I do know when we, we phase one went through, there was some conversation, uh, some pushback from Greenville County. Uh, based on some improvements they were planning, and so there, there was some some pushback about whether or not to put some sidewalk in there if they might be going right behind it and ripping things up. So we'll probably have to coordinate with the county a little bit and find out what their future plans are for the area, as well to look to see if the engineering and uh, stormwater for the for the road will allow it to to go in. And Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Knudsen. Thank you, Mr. Hutchings. Any other comments or questions from council? Hearing none, then we will have a roll call vote. So on the ordinance to approve SP, not sorry, not ordinance, on the motion to approve SP-20-06, water leaf at Neely Ferry major change. Clerk Long, would you do a roll call vote, please? Council Member Gooch. Yes. Councilmember Kelly? Yes. Councilmember Houlihan? Yes. Councilmember Roche? Yes. Councilmember Cummings?
Council Member Cummings. Council Member Hutchings. Yes. Mayor Schumacher. Yes. We lost Council Member Cummings. Vote was unanimous. Motion carried. Thank you, Clerk Long. Next item of business is item 6C, ordinance number 2020-04, Swamp Rabbit Trail. Administrator Gracely, will you summarize, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor, members of council. Um, uh, as Mr. West mentioned earlier, when Ms. Roche asked her question about the flags on South Main Street, um, we have installed some signage um, that indicates no motorized vehicles are allowed on our section of the Swamp Rabbit Trail that we constructed from Trade Street along South Main down to Fairview. Um, unfortunately, we don't have an ordinance to enforce that. So um, Chief Hanshaw and I talked about the easiest way to accommodate um, uniform enforcement for all activities along the trail um, sections in Simpsonville for it to be, for those standards to be the same as the other portions of the trail throughout the county. So what we are proposing is an ordinance and the language in it is fairly simple that would just have some um, prohibitions for motorized vehicles primarily. Also uh, establishing a speed limit for cyclists, which was a big problem uh, in the northern part of the county when the trail was first converted there. And then also to uh, prohibit solicitation and um, advertisements along the trail um, so that there can't be, you know, private enterprises setting up along the trail. Um, it's basically just, as I mentioned, so that we have uniform standards for all trail users throughout the county. So this is the same ordinance that has been adopted by the city of Greenville, the city of Travel Dress, and Greenville County for the incorporated um, parts of the county where the trail is located. Um, so I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have about this proposed ordinance. Thank you, Administrator Gracefully. A motion is in order. Councilmember Hutchings. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a uh, motion to approve ordinance number 2020-04, an ordinance to amend chapter 32 streets, sidewalks, and other public places by adding article <coughs> six Swamp Rabbit Trail to govern the use of the city's portion of the Swamp Rabbit Trail. Second. Thank you. I have a motion by Council Member Hutchings with a second by Council Member Kelly to approve ordinance number 2020-04, an ordinance to amend chapter 32 streets, sidewalks, and other public places by adding article six Swamp Rabbit Trail to govern the use of the city's portion of the Swamp Rabbit Trail. Discussion? Did I see you raise your hand, Councilmember Houlihan? No. All right. Uh, I have uh, one question, possibly an amendment. Um, it says no motorized vehicles. Uh, would a battery-powered bicycle, uh, which are popular, would that be considered a motorized vehicle? Yeah, uh, Administrator Gracefully? Uh, no, sir. I don't believe that would be considered a motorized vehicle. Okay. So... I think that would also then apply that an electric uh, wheelchair for a handicapped person wouldn't be considered a motorized vehicle either. Right. Electric bicycles are governed uh, to a, a maximum speed of 28 miles per hour. So a person who is riding one of those would still need to monitor their speed, but they typically come with a odometer on them anyway. So, okay, well, if uh, that's okay, then I'm okay with it. Any other discussion or questions from council? City Clerk Long, will you do a roll call vote on the or, on the ordinance to uh, the motion to approve the ordinance number 2020-04, an ordinance to amend chapter 32 street sidewalks and other public places by adding article six Swamp Rabbit Trail to govern the use of the city portion of the Swamp Rabbit Trail. The roll call vote, please. Council Member Gooch. Yes. Council Member Kelly? Yes. Council Member Houlihan? Yes. Council Member Roche? Yes. Council Member Cummings? 
Council Member Hutchings? Yes. Mayor Schumacher? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. The next item of business is item 6D, emergency ordinance number E2020-05. Administrator Gracely, will you summarize, please? Thank you, Mayor. Members of Council, um, the current emergency ordinance that we are operating under expires, I believe, on November the 7th or 8th, which is just a few days prior to our next business meeting. So in order to avoid a called special meeting, um, we are requesting that Council go ahead and approve Emergency Ordinance 2020-05. This will be our fifth incarnation of the Emergency Ordinance, which basically just allows us to continue to meet virtually and gives me the authority to close down any public buildings should we have a COVID outbreak. Um, I hope that doesn't happen. So essentially, this is just to allow Council to continue to meet virtually. Thank you, Administrator Gracely. A motion is in order. Council Member Kelly. I make a motion to approve emergency ordinance E-2020-05. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Kelly with a second from Council Member Gooch to approve emergency ordinance number E-2020-05. Discussion, Council Member Kelly. Um, what would be the date that this one would expire? Do you have that? Um, I don't have it right in front of someone. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we will, uh, Council Member Gooch. Um, we've had several of these, obviously. We're on our, it's our fifth iteration here. When are we going to start talking about getting back together and meeting as a council live the public? I know we need to do this for the moment, but we're a public body that needs to be meeting publicly, so is there any thoughts about that? Um, I would just defer to all of you as, as council members on that. Um, I, I do think um, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, second wave of COVID this fall. Um, I hope that it's not going to be as bad as, as we've heard, um, but certainly I think for the next 60 days at least, um, we would want to continue to meet this play. And um, as you are aware, um, this is our last committee of the whole meeting for 2020. So there will just be one business meeting in November and one business meeting in December where we'll be meeting this way. Um, so perhaps if, if things are looking up by the start of 2021, we can discuss not doing another ordinance. Um, but for the time being, I think certainly for the next 60 days, we probably need to continue to meet remotely. Um, I know that we have some council members and some staff who are concerned about um, meeting in person. Certainly, I, I don't want to endanger anyone or make anybody feel uncomfortable. Um, but I also don't want this to go on forever for us or for anybody else. But you know, I know we need to look at it soon. Probably after this one's over, we'll talk as a council about what we want to try to do. But thank you. Council Member Roche? I do tend to agree with Councilman Gooch. Um, I feel like this fifth one, I'd really like to see it over with by the end of the year and in January. Uh, we get back to meeting face-to-face. -face. So if we say 60 days, so we're looking at then, um, I guess that would take place now or would it begin the 7th or 8th? It, it would be effective today, on today's day, 60 okay. days today. So we're, we are getting into January. Um I think I'll probably approve this one more time. And then I think, you know, not knowing the future, of course, if there's another outbreak, we have to, you know, sober up about that and um, reconsider. But I do agree with Mr. Gooch that it's time to get the people's business back in a face-to-face -face manner. Um, there were some people that wanted to speak tonight but didn't want to be recorded. Um and that sort of thing, but they would have been willing to speak had we been meeting in, in person. Um, 
So I'd like to see us get back together again in January. So I'm hoping and praying that happens. Any other comments or, or discussion from council? Okay, on the uh, emergency, uh, the motion to approve emergency ordinance number E-2020-05, City Clerk Long, will you do a roll call vote, please? Council Member Gooch? Yes. Council Member Kelly? Yes. Council Member Houlihan? Yes. Council Member Roche? Yes. Council Member Cummings? Council Member Hutchings? Yes. Mayor Schumacher? Yes. Motion carried. Our final item of business tonight is item 6C, Animal Ordinance. Council Member Roche, will you summarize, please? Yes, um, there will be a change. I'd like to go ahead and remove this from discussion for tonight. Um, it's been brought to my attention that um, the ordinance, you know, if there's going to be any sort of change, there's other things that need to also be overhauled. Um, so I'd like to go ahead and postpone this discussion for another time uh, so I can do some more research and collaborate with a few more people. I don't want to introduce it now um, without having everything in order. Thank you, Council Member Roche. If there is no motion to introduce this item, then we have completed all business items for this evening. Hearing no motion, if there is no objection, we will adjourn for, for this evening. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Good night.